iconic scene ending Brady Bunch. Kids who grew up in the late 60s and early 70s remember the Brady Bunch fondly. Adults, too. Although this all-American sitcom was not a big hit when it aired in September 1969, it's since found its audience through syndication. Viewers were hooked on the feel-good storylines, the clean-cut blended family, the familial love that seemed to overcome all odds, and the clear-cut endings in every episode where problems are solved and squabbles are resolved. For many families, the Bradys were the near-perfect family who showed what genuine unity and love can do. But nothing lasts forever. Even a sitcom about a lovely bunch of people. Here's a look back at this beloved TV series and the iconic scene ended Brady Bunch. Meet the Bradys The Bradys are Mike, an architect who was a widower and had three sons, Greg, Peter, and Bobby and Carol, a freelance writer slash sculptor slash activist who had three daughters, Marsha, Jan, and Cindy. Mike and Cindy fall in love and move in together, making for a quite large blended family. Along with the family members, there was Alice Nelson, their housekeeper, and Tiger, the boy's dog. They lived in the suburbs of L.A. in a two-story house that Mike himself designed. Most of the episodes are centered around the relationships of the family members and their small struggles that they were not only a blended family but also a family consisting of teens and preteens. Based on a true news story The show was created by Sherwood Schwartz. He read an article on the Los Angeles Times about how there was a notable increase in the number of marriages between partners who had kids from previous partners. An idea was born and became the Brady Bunch. Schwartz was sued for plagiarism for the series. He was accused of stealing the idea from the Yours, Mine, and Ours 1968 film. Fortunately, he had notes to prove that the story idea was actually an original. Secrets Behind the Camera Barry Williams played the eldest Brady son, Greg. He was about 14 years old when he started in the series. As a young teen, of course, he had crushes, but who he had crushes on is quite surprising and a bit awkward. He had his eye on no other than the lovely Florence Henderson, who played Carol as TV mom. At the time, Henderson was already 20 years older than Barry, but it didn't deter the young boy from asking her out to dinner. Henderson, who was 36 at the time, humored Williams, who was 16. She was happily married and had four children. They went out for dinner, and Barry's brother even drove them because the young man didn't have a driver's license. Henderson would recall years later that the incident was blown way out of proportion and Williams admitted in his memoir that he merely wanted to spend some time with her. Barry did find a more age-appropriate date, but it was no less awkward, in a sense. He and Maureen McCormick, who played his TV sister Marcia, did go out for a while. Casting Kids Schwartz was in charge of casting the kids, and 264 young actors showed up. Since there were so many, Schwartz decided to test the kids. He laid out different toys on top of his desk before calling in each actor. Those who easily got distracted by the toys were rejected, and only those who focused on the audition were tested. Greg wasn't that squeaky clean. Williams began smoking pot in his early teens. There's an episode on the series where he shot the scenes well high. He was actually on a day off and was smoking pot with friends when he suddenly got a call for a shoot. And Marcia too. Maureen McCormick herself was no stranger to drug use. Early fame and other pressures led the actress to use illegal drugs, specifically cocaine. She was so dependent on drugs that she failed an audition for Raiders of the Lost Ark, a Steven Spielberg film. In her memoir, McCormick also revealed that she underwent three abortions before she turned 21. She said that she had each abortion at 18, 19, and at 20. At the time, she was using drugs and had little control over herself. She also tried to maintain her enviable figure through dieting and later develop bulimia. She's since gotten her act back together. Petty Theft While still a teen on the show, McCormick used to shoplift for the fun of it, according to Olson. She would bring a pal along, and if she ever got caught, she would point to her friend as the shoplifter. Dad Brady is a real-life hero. In one scene during the final episode of the show, the family was supposed to ride a roller coaster. A cameraman was attached to one of the seats, but Robert Reed, the actor playing Mike Brady, noticed that he was unstable. 
the crew decided to do a test run with an empty coaster and when the run was over the camera was no longer there it likely hit an overhang during the run had Reed not noticed the camera someone in the cast could have been injured seriously Robert Reed was gay Robert Reed was a classically trained Reed Shakespearean actor who was not comfortable with many of the storylines and visual gags used in the show because he preferred a serious approach. He was also gay but kept his personal life highly private. Due to the prevailing sentiments of the time, Reed playing a straight dad would not have been believable. Why Mike Brady is not in the last episode Reed was increasingly becoming displeased with the scripts that came in for each episode. One day, he read a script he hated so much that he demanded a rewrite or else he wouldn't show up for work. The producers wouldn't budge, and Reed stayed away, which is why he doesn't appear in the finale. Father Figure According to Mike Lookinland and Susan Olson, Reed was a wonderful castmate who cared about them the way a father would. They even stated that he was a better father figure to them than their own fathers. He even brought them on a vacation to London with the other Brady kids in tow. Fluffy the Cat Tiger the Dog was not the only Brady pet that appeared on the show. There was also Fluffy, who made an appearance in the honeymoon episode. The cat was chased by the dog and caused some serious damage during the wedding. After that scene, Fluffy simply disappeared and wasn't even mentioned for the rest of the series run. Where's Tiger? Tiger the Dog was killed in an accident during the filming of the first season. He was a trained dog and was still vital to the show. His trainer dropped by a dog pound and found a lookalike. Unfortunately, this doggo was untrained and didn't care for directions. In some scenes, he had to have his collar nailed to the ground so he wouldn't leave. Because filming him was getting difficult, the producers decided not to include him in shoots unless absolutely essential. However, they kept his doghouse in the set, even if Tiger, too, was not present. Top-notch actors nearly played parts Two Oscar winners nearly played characters on the show. One was Gene Hackman, who was a strong contender for the role of Mike. He only lost out to Reed because he didn't have a high recognizability factor among TV viewers. The other was Jodie Foster, who auditioned for Cindy but ultimately lost to Susan Olsen. All went well for the two, however. The year after the series premiered, Hackman starred in The French Connection, for which he won an Oscar, and Jodie Foster, for her part, went on to deliver a great performance in Taxi Driver years later, a role that paired her with Robert De Niro and Harvey Keitel. Too Good-Looking Jeffrey Hunter, famous for his roles in The Searchers and King of Kings, wanted the role of Mike Brady. The executives had to say no, however, because they thought that Hunter was too handsome and didn't look the part of the fatherly middle-aged Mike. Shirley Jones was nearly Carol Brady The role of Carol Brady was fiercely competed over by many actresses. In the beginning, however, the role was offered to Shirley Jones, but she turned it down. Jones later agreed to play another iconic role in The Partridge Family. No Divorce The character of Carol Brady was originally written as a divorced woman but the topic was too sensitive for the time period. In fact, the subject of divorce was a primetime TV taboo back then. This explains why her status was never discussed. Toilets were taboo Another taboo of sorts during 70s primetime TV was the filming of a toilet bowl. Simply wasn't appreciated, which is why it's never seen on TV shows of the time. Although the kids shared a bathroom, the toilet bowl was never seen. Interestingly, the toilet tank was allowed, but the producers decided to play safe and just simply not show the John at all. Real-life Cindy really did have a lisp. Olsen actually spoke with a lisp in real life, although many people thought that Cindy's lisp was the real thing. It was an adorable quirk of her character, but something that Olsen wanted to get rid of. She sought the help of therapists to help her fix the problem until she was already a teenager. When the treatment didn't work, she decided to undergo a surgical procedure to get rid of her lisp completely. Blonde hair hurts If you haven't noticed the pattern yet, the Brady boys were all dark-haired while the Brady girls were all blonde. It was just the thing of the show. Olsen was actually blonde, but her hair had to be the perfect shade of blonde. To achieve the color, the young child had to undergo regular hair bleaching procedures beginning when she was just eight years old. Eventually, the strong chemical treatments caused her hair to fall out in clumps. 
Olsen wasn't the only child to undergo hair treatments for the sake of the show. Lookin' Lind was a natural strawberry blonde, and he had to dye his hair a dark shade of brown to keep up the visual aesthetic of the series. 